This is a problem from section 7-4. The body mass index for a sample of men and sample of women are given below. Assume the samples are sim simple, random samples obtained from populations with normal distributions. We have to construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation of BMIs for men and one for women as well. So here's the data for our men and women's BMIs and what we need to do looking at this formula is we need to find the the n the sample size which in this case for both of them is equal to 10 and then we need to find our standard deviation for each of them and then we need to square that so that's essentially finding the variance and then we need the, the chi-squared critical values on the left and on the right sides so fortunately, because they both have the same degrees of freedom or same sample size n, our chi-square distribution will be the same. They also have the same confidence interval or confidence level. Let's first find the standard deviations. The thing to do for this is to find the standard deviations, and uh, you can do it any way you want. I'm going to use my calculator and put it in, put my values into list one and list two, and then do a one of our stats. So if I press stat and edit, this will give me an opportunity to enter all my values. I've already done that for both the men and the women. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of here and hit stat again. This time I'm going to go to calc and then do a one var stats. And then this will be a one var stats on L1. And then I'll hit enter. And then I'm going to focus my attention on the S, SX. So 3.55, let's call it. So let's get our information for the men. We have n is equal to 10, and we have our standard deviation s, and that's equal to 3.55. Now we're going to need our critical values as well, but we're going to let's find that later. For now, let's find the women's. Go back to stat, and then calc, and one of our stats. And then this time I want to put L2 because I had put my list in L2. So let's find the statistics for L2. Here my standard deviation is 6.38. We have the same N and our S this time is 6.38. Now we need to find our chi-square values. Uh, some calculators have an inverse chi-squared that would be good if uh, if you know how to use it. My calculator does not, so I'm going to rely on the table, and we're going to use table A4. And what we need to do is we need to draw our distribution, and this is a skewed distribution, unlike the normal or the T distributions. This is skewed, and then it, and it starts at zero, and zero is not the center. We don't know exactly where the center is. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on these tails. So we want a 99% confidence, so we have an area of 0.99 in the middle, which means the tails over here get split into, into two. So we have 0.01, and then we need to divide that by two. Each tail would have an area of 0 0.005. What's important for finding the critical values, which are these numbers down here, is to try to figure out the area to the right of your critical values. If we're looking for this value over here on the right side, we need to identify the area to the right of that value and the area is 0 0.005. On the other hand, if we want the area of the critical value for this left side, the area to the right, well the area to the left is 0 0.005, which means the area to the right will be 0.995. So that's important. Okay. Uh, let me give this a little bit more room so I can do some proper labeling. Again, this is your chi-square value, and this is the value on the right side, and this is your chi-square value on the left for this particular set of critical values. So let's identify those using our table. Here's our table A4, and this is a drawing that we had earlier and uh, we are at 99% confidence level. The other piece of information we need is the n, and we knew that n was equal to 10, 
and remember that our degrees of freedom is one less than that so our degrees of freedom is nine so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the degrees of freedom over here and this is the degrees of freedom of nine and then we're going to look at the area to the left and area area to the right of each of these points an area of point zero zero five an area of point zero zero five will be over here and so if I look down at this value I see that it's 23.589 and that's your chi-square on the left side on the right side now there's some symmetry here so it's all the way at the end of the table on the right so if we look all the way at the end of the table on the left you get the other half of 0.995 and then you scroll down over here you see a small number 1.735 so those are our two critical values that we can find using this table. Now let's go back to our problem. Let's label our values. On the right side we have 23.589 and on the left side we have 1.735. So those are our values and now let's punch this into our calculators. Let's clear our calculator and then we're going to put this in one by one for each of these problems. So let's start with amends. We're going to start our calculator command with a square root. So the second function and the x squared which is a square root and now we have n minus 1 so that's 10 minus 1. You can write 10 minus 1 or that's just equal to 9. And then you're going to multiply by s so our s is 3.55 and then we're going to square that and then we'll divide by the critical value on the right and the critical value on the right is 23.589 we'll close the parentheses and we'll press enter so our lower value is 2.1927 now let's go ahead and figure out our upper value I'm going to use that trick with a calculator where I only need to change a little bit of the my input so I'm going to press second function and enter and so I'm going to have my whole last input here and then I just need to change this critical value to 1.735 if I have an extra digit I just press the delete button or if I need to insert something I would press the insert button which is a second and then the same button delete all right, I'll press enter to get my upper limit for this. So my upper limit is 8.08 .08 or 8.09. Let's write that. So we'll start off with a lower limit of 2.19. We'll have a less than sign. And then we need sigma because we're using the sample standard deviation to make an estimate for the population standard deviation. This is for the population of all the men and then we have a less than sign and then our upper limit is 8.085 or 8.09 so this is our confidence interval for the men okay let's do the same for the women fortunately we're going to have the same critical values because it's the same sample size uh, sample size of 10 and same confidence interval confidence interval of 99 percent let's go ahead and retype some stuff in I'm going to say second function square root and then we know that uh, our n minus 1 is 9 and then we're going to multiply that by s this time the s is 6.38 and then we need to square that and then we will divide by the let's do the le the left side first which uses the chi squared right critical value and again that's 23.589 We'll close a parenthesis and hit enter and we'll see that this is going to be the lower limit for the women's standard deviation BMI so this is 3.94 we'll run this again and we'll change the critical value instead of the chi-square R like we had we're going to use chi-square L which is in this case or the same as the last case 1.735 delete that extra digit press enter and here we have the, the confidence interval so let's type in our answers 
3.94 less than sigma and less than 14.53 so that's our result so far it says here compare and interpret the results so in terms of comparing the results we could take a look at this this goes from 2 to 8 this goes from 3 about 4 to 14 so they look like they overlap and when things overlap in statistics, we usually say that there is not a significant difference between them. And so let's see the choices that the problem has. Here are the possible choices. The first one, since the intervals do not overlap, the population appears to have amounts of variation that are sub not substantially different. Well, they do overlap, so we're going to cross this one out. The second one, since the intervals overlap, the populations appear to have different amounts of variation. Well, because they overlap, they actually look like they're the same, so we'll cross this one out as well. Since the intervals overlap, the population appears to have amounts of variation that are not substantially different. So I think it's this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and underline or circle this, and let's just read the last one to make sure. Since the intervals do not overlap, the populations appear to have different amounts of variation. So they do, in fact, overlap so we know it's not this one so this is going to be your choice okay so i hope that helps in creating confidence intervals for standard deviations